Police officers' lives depend on more than just equipment. Quick thinking and cool logic are critical, even when the suspect is someone officers know. Butte, Montana. Terry Rossland, a man with a history of mental illness, sits inside a car he's rigged with deadly explosives. His car is parked in a downtown intersection. Rossland threatens to blow up his car. Sergeant Dan Hollis, Lieutenant Bob Lee, and Sheriff Bob Butorovich are the first officers to arrive on the scene. They're also lifelong friends with the suspect. Their first instinct is to reason with Terry. I knew Terry from the time he was 15 years old. We were always able to talk to him, resolve the situation, resolve the problem. I felt very strongly that face-to-face uh, -face contact would probably be better than standing back 50 feet talking through a bullhorn. While talking to Terry, they discover his intricate system of bombs. They quickly realize the bombs are powerful enough to destroy everything within a 50-yard radius. I looked in the back seat of the vehicle and saw probably 25 to 30 gallons of gasoline and the equal number of gunpowder in, in plastic containers. There are also two pipe bombs, one on the passenger seat and one under Terry. I noticed Terry sitting in the front seat and at that time he was fooling with something in his hand that appeared to be a toggle switch. A simple flip of this switch will ignite the bombs. For more than an hour, the three officers plead with Terry not to go through with his threat. The longer it went on, the less comfortable we were with the situation. We knew we were losing Terry, that we were not communicating. And he was becoming someone that I was not familiar with, and that scared me. Sergeant Hollis motions the other two officers to the rear of the car. We had a little conversation in the back of the car there, and I says, you know, Terry is not Terry. I think he might actually do this. The officers decide to back off, but Terry has different plans. As we turn to walk away, he calls us back to the vehicle. He said, hey, Bob, come here. And I thought at this point that he was going to give it up. Terry does the unthinkable and detonates the pipe bomb on the front seat. Uh, all I saw was just this huge explosion. And I just knew that, you know, I, I had lost two fellow officers. Sergeant Hollis runs through the flames to help Lieutenant Lee. Miraculously, Sheriff Butorovich remains standing. The next thing that I knew, I was pacing back and forth. I couldn't see out of one eye. Then, to everyone's shock and horror, Terry emerges from the burning car. There he is! Get him! Get him! Get him, Matt! When I saw Terry uh, get out of the vehicle, he was totally engulfed in flame. His, his clothing was completely on fire. And I heard him saying, oh no, oh no, oh no. Heroically, Sheriff Utorovich rushes to save the man who just tried to kill him. Badly burned, Terry lies on the ground as flames reach the gasoline bomb in the rear of the car. Emergency personnel tend to the victims, while firefighters race to extinguish the flames. But the fire ignites the remaining pipe bomb under the driver's seat. Freed from the risk of additional bombs, firefighters gain the upper hand. Amazingly, both Lieutenant Lee and Sergeant Butorovich receive only minor injuries from the blast. Terry Rossland also survives, with burns over 70% of his body. But before he stands trial, Rossland takes his own life. The officers who survived Terry Rossland's car bombs credit simple luck for remaining alive. Do I feel that I'm, I'm, I'm lucky to be alive today? You bet I do. I'm very fortunate. Uh, there are times that I wake up at night thinking about this and sweating, uh, thinking, you know, how fortunate I was.